yelling at people, nice Halloween costume, regardless of whether they were in fancy dress. Uh, this year, I actually uh, dressed up for Halloween. Uh, I decided to uh, to go dressed as a scary Polish nurse. Yeah. It's scary because in March 2019, she leaves your country and there's no one to look after you while you die. <laughs> yeah, I think a Brexit joke, Brexit joke, very uh, topical, topical. Uh, look, Morty. I often think to myself, if my grandpa had heard about revolving coffins, he'd be turning in his grave. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got, um, I want to talk a bit about women now because uh, I actually have an incredible record with women. Uh, it's the world record for the most women in a row turning someone down. 479. Uh, but I've had, uh, I've had some really difficult times with women. Uh, I can, uh, can vividly remember um, uh, you know, my last girlfriend, I killed her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was an accident. I didn't mean to. I, I loved her so much uh, that I chopped her in half um, in the hope that she, like a worm, might become two separate functional entities. <laughs> Turns out that's not how it works. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, but um, uh, yeah, it's very difficult with women, isn't it? I had um, a really tough breakup recently where, um, you know, this. Um, a girl kind of accused me of cheating and of being unfaithful, which was really, um, kind of really hurtful. Um, uh, but it did make me uh, grateful for the, the love and support of my other girlfriend. <laughs> uh, breakups are tough, aren't they? Breakups are tough. I can vividly remember uh, my first breakup, my first breakup. The toughest thing about breakups is when there's no ice cream. Do you find this? Breakups with no ice cream in the world. My first ever breakup, uh, it was, um, the shop was shut and there was a, nowhere I could go to get ice cream, and I can remember chewing my way through an entire jar of mayonnaise, uh, just to try and get that texture. Uh, swinging down vodka in between just to take the edge off it. I was nine years old. Uh, but at the moment, I'm very happy. I've got a lovely girlfriend, Sophia, and she's, she's absolutely lovely. She's a dream, she's wonderful. Uh, I love her uh, so very much. Recently, we actually, uh, we both went out to a friend's house, uh, and the friend said, why don't we play a game? It's a little game we'll play. Um, to see how well you two know each other, right? It's a quiz to see how well you know each other. Uh, so we, we uh, played this game and he'd ask a question and I'd write down what I would say in response to that question. But Sophia would have to write down uh, her guess for what I would say. So it was a quiz to see how well does Sophia know me, right? So the first question comes up. Uh, uh, if Joe could have anyone round for dinner from history for a dinner party, who would it be? Right, so I wrote down my answer. Sophia writes down her guess. Uh, we open them up. Sophia's written as her guest. She's written uh, Martin Luther King. Right. Uh, we open my bit of paper up. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Do you go, what? Why have you chosen Adolf Hitler? I said, well, think about it. Uh, you have Adolf Hitler around for dinner. You can explain to him uh, why he shouldn't start World War II. You can kind of talk him out of it. You can uh, explain to him that he's going he's gonna to ruin it for everyone. He's going to ruin fascism for everyone. Uh, and he's going to moustaches. Uh, he's going to ruin... Uh, you talk him out of it and, you know, you save 20 million lives. Uh, Sophia said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, so nonsense. We went on to question two. We went on to uh, question two. It was, describe yourself in one word. Describe yourself in one word. So uh, I wrote down my answer. Sophia wrote down her guess. Uh, we opened them up. Mine said, well endowed. <laughs> Sophia said, short-sighted. <laughs> uh, we moved to Smithfield. Number three, number three uh, was, uh, when Joe was a kid, what job did he want to do when he was older? Right, so, uh, so I wrote down my answer, Sophia wrote down her guess. We opened them up. I'd written, firefighter. Yeah. Sophia had written, sporty spice. <laughs> Which confirmed my suggestion that I had been oversharing. Uh, <laughs> uh, the fourth question was, uh, what's the one thing that's guaranteed to cause an argument? Uh, if you say it to Joe, the one thing that's guaranteed to start an argument. I wrote down my answer, 
It's been a very downhill guess. Uh, my answer, uh, we opened them up, mine said, uh, Marxist dialectical materialism is obsolete. Uh, yeah, it's about here, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, her answer, she opened it up, posh spice is better. <laughs> she's not, she's not. Uh, and then uh, the last one, the last question, question number five, um, was uh, who would be Joe's dream date, but it can't be her, it can't be Sophia, who would be his dream date? Right, so, Wrote it down, wrote down my answer. Uh, Sophia wrote down her guess for what I wrote. Yeah. Open them up. I'd written Mila Kunis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sophia opened hers up. Adolf Hitler. What? <laughs> and then what? what it's a date. Why are you reading Adolf Hitler? She said, well, you said you wanted to you know, talk about starting uh, World War II. I said, well, yeah, but it's a, it's a date. Uh, I want Mila Kunis. She's, she's really pretty. And to be so, so you're deciding to now shelve, you know, saving the lives of 20 million people just because Mila Kunis is attractive. I said, I said, have you seen Black Swan? She said, no. I said, then you wouldn't understand. She said, maybe you should watch Schindler's List. <laughs> I checked, she's not in it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I love Sophia very much. She's absolutely wonderful. And she's very tolerant of my flaws and my defects. She's uh, incredibly tolerant, actually. I've, um, over the months, I've done so many stupid things. I've, uh, I've uh, stabbed her with a fork at a dinner party. I've run over her with my bike forwards and backwards. Uh, I've uh, borrowed her handcrafted waxen wings and flown too close to the sun, and they melted. Uh, I've, um, I've, uh, I've bought her a skull for our anniversary. Uh, I bought her a diet video for Christmas, uh, which I thought was a rom-com. Uh, I bought her tampons for her birthday, uh, which I thought were Nerf gun bullets. Uh, I've, uh, I've given her, um, oh, I've given her everything. A yellow fever, scarlet fever, fever, uh, chicken pox, small pox, pox. Uh, I've given her um, a swine flu, bird flu, flu, uh, rabies. I've given her MRSA uh, and rickets. Um, previously not thought to be contagious. Uh, I've, I've accidentally pushed her down the stairs, I've accidentally pushed her up the stairs, I've accidentally pushed her into the stairs. Uh, I've, uh, I've accidentally called her uh, Sarah, Sadie, Sandy, Samantha, Sabina, Sabrina, Selena, Serena, Mila Kunis. Um, I've done all sorts of stupid things, and there comes a time when you get to such a, a critical mass of stupid things uh, that you end up writing a song. Uh, and this uh, is a, a song about our relationship and uh, and it's called stumbling into love I hesitate I vacillate I'm indecisive and I'm not very bold I deliberate equivocate I keep two jackets on while you tell me you're cold I'm unsociable and sedentary Your mum, I'm a lover and chop a certain grump, but I wanna go stumbling into love with you. I drag a bit, I flag a bit. I look for you a rose, but stab your nose with the thorns. I will flag a bit, I sag a bit. Invite you for a walk in an electrical storm. I'm insufferably tentative, dense and argumentative, and utterly insensitive too. I will be dozy and dull, a mosey and mull, a walk for you. Run over your toes while I'm on with your lawn. I will mishear and misread you, mislate and mislead you. I'll ask you what you're up to, then theatrically yawn. I'm a scamp, I'm a tramp right through, but I don't want to go stumbling into that. Ignorance and gravity belligerent too. I will be dorky and dumb, I'm dorky and glum. I'll walk under a bus so I'm holding your hand. I will be hazy and 
bonefish, lazy and a loafish. Accidentally sell you to an Indian man. I'm a scout, I'm a tramp right through, but I don't want to go stumbling into the I'm going to take you on a wasp path. I'm going to take you on a, a wasp path, a path where you can see all different kinds of wasps. He said he'd take me on a wasp path, but he didn't. It was a betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is going to surprise you, but I was bullied as a child. And um, it was very tough for me when I was uh, in secondary school. Uh, I was bullied quite a lot. There was this one guy, he was the ringleader. He was called Alex Watchford. He was uh, this really unpleasant guy. I can vividly remember. He'd do horrible things to me. He'd, um, he'd steal my lunch money. Uh, he'd uh, shot my head down the school chimney. Um, he'd give me a Christmas present, but then when I opened it up, just fingernails. Just, yeah, box of fingernails, yeah. Uh, he, wants, um, he wants hung an effigy of me uh, to a noose and threw it off the bell tower uh, and then uh, hosted a party for the entire year group, um, which uh, I only found out about later. I was still alive, I was still alive. Um, but I uh, actually met up with Alex Watchford, he believed me horribly, and I met up with him uh, a little while ago, and he, you know, said to me, uh, you know, uh, oh, I remember back in the days at school, come on, he said, he said, he said, oh, I was an arsehole, <laughs> and he laughed, as if it was uh, something funny that he'd been an arsehole in the past and now he wasn't, and that was absolutely fine, but people don't realise, do they, there's consequences to bullying someone, uh, at that age, it can have a real impact on your confidence, it can really crush your self-esteem. Uh, I, for example, have been reduced to uh, telling jokes to strangers in order to get a sense of self-worth. Uh, which, yeah, yeah, it's devastating, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and, you know, just to say, oh, I was such an arsehole. You know, if anything, actually, when you were a child, what you were like, i.e. an arsehole, is a better indication of what your inner soul would be like, you know, than what you are now when years of social conditioning has made you realise that it's wrong uh, to make an effigy of someone and hang it from the bell tower. Um, you know, saying, oh, when I was a kid I was an arsehole, <laughs> is a bit like overhearing someone bad-mouthing Geminis and saying, oh, <laughs> I was born a <in> Gemini. <laughs> you might have changed, but it's unlikely. Um, and I, uh, I think back to what Alex Watchford did. He was a really nasty piece of work. One of the most vivid memories I have from childhood um, is when Alex made me dress up as a woman uh, and he took photos uh, and then he made them into fridge magnets and sold them to parents in Aiden Comic Relief. My mum bought three. It was, uh, it was a horrible time uh, in my life. Uh, the only good thing about that time in my life was, um, was PE, actually. Weirdly, I was really good at PE. I had quite good um, hand eye coordination. I was reasonably fast. We meant, actually, PE, um, I quite enjoyed. People quite, uh, quite liked me. It was the only lesson where I didn't get bullied. Um, and actually, when I look back now, I think, you know, PE, uh, I feel quite nostalgic for PE. Uh, so I've actually written a song um, remembering the, those times in okay. PE. Uh, I'm going to finish with this. I, I should stress, <coughs> I'm, um, I'm not 100% sure whether this is a comedy song. Uh, I wrote it intending it to be, uh, but in retrospect I'm not sure if it is. Uh, so I'm going to play it for you and we'll, we'll see what we all make of it. Uh, this is PE. Little bit of fitness and speed. 
week, but I won't forget those memories. I'll rake some shirts our boots caked with dirt. Toronto wants the girls in the netball skirts. Hitting tennis balls and cricket balls and all that in the changing rooms comparing the size of our shoes. Spring, uh, turning on the shower with someone's clothes in it. Burying ourselves in the long jump pit, then leaping out and scaring people out of their wits. And cleaning up the vomit of the fat kid Steve. I wish I could go back to those days that we spent in peace. Tuesday in year nine, period five was PE time. Well, I might have lost a little bit, might have got a little less chanty and charged, but those PE memories still loom large. The nicknames we coined, the play fights we joined, laughing when someone took a ball to the groin. The swimming pool scores, let down flicking wars, stripping someone naked on the locker room floor, spraying deodorant in someone's mouth for a bit. Hiding rusty nails in the long jump pit Then nicking all the stuff out of the first aid kit And holding a candle in vigil and funeral service In memory of the fat kid, Steve <laughs> Oh, I wish I could go back to those days that we spent in peace Laughing at the lads whose mums were tart Super gluing somebody's hands to their arse and telling the psychologist years later, it was just a joke. What we did to the fat kid Steve, it was, it was only a bit of fun. It was just having a laugh. We, we thought he found it funny too. It was, it, was, it was just a bit of banter. <laughs> I wish. One more time for Joe, please, people.